Hello, my name is Brian Knack, and I'm here to talk about my new book, Made for War, 52 Weeks of Wisdom and Revelation. It's a Bible study devotional that's meant to draw the reader closer to Jesus to let him know more about who Jesus is and who about and more about who they are. Uh, it's available for sale now at Amazon.com and at my website, www.brianknack.com. I'd like to read one of the devotionals from there now and just do a little talking about it and maybe help you understand a little more about who God is, who you are, and uh, who you are made to be. The title of the devotional is called Going Deep. And uh, it's about, I heard a wonderful message by a uh, great man of God talking at a youth conference. And he went into how deep calls under deep and how that someone who just wading in the shallows can never have any part of the deep waters. Someone sitting, sitting comfortably on the shore will never know the deep and how as you go deeper and deeper, how the pressure increases. As I was sitting there after the service, I just remember kind of staring off into space and just God talking to me, and I just, you know, kind of got this blank look over my face, you know, and a friend was sitting in front of me and said, Brian, Brian, where are you? And, you know, when God starts speaking, you just like tune everything else out. But uh, the Holy Spirit just brought to me, I remember some movie I saw a long time ago, maybe some of you will know it, it's called The Abyss. Near the end of that movie, the main character has to dive down to the bottom of a abyssal trench, some six or so miles beneath the surface of the ocean. Definitely an amazing feat, considering hum humans can only dive maybe a couple hundred feet without needing decompression. If we need to go any deeper than that, we need special suits and even submarines. And even they can only go so deep, maybe a half a mile or so, at the very most. After that, the weight of billions of tons of seawater creates far too great a pressure for any man or man-made machine to venture. The man in the moon movie used a, a fluid breathing device designed for the Navy SEALs. Basically, he breathed in a super oxyg oxygenated liquid excuse me, that kept his lungs from collapsing under the great pressure. Wow. Uh, I actually think this is something they've actually worked on. I'm not positive about that. I never did the research into it, but I mean, just think about that you're breathing in liquid. But, I mean, just think about it, for the first nine months of your life, you're breathing liquid. So, it, 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 I think it is possible. But, I digress. Let me continue on here. <laughs> um, it's very simply, without oxygen, we die. We must breathe or we die. In Ephesians 5.26, God says that Christ sanctified the church by the washing of the water of the Word. God compares the Word with the water which cleanses and brings life. You want to go deep with God? You want to endure the pressure that's going to come as you go deeper? You need a fluid breathing device. You need the Word. Jesus said he was the water of life. Jesus is the Word of God made manifest in the flesh. When you get down to those extreme depths, there are other problems you're going to encounter as well. In the deep, there's no natural light. We see the similarities to the tabernacle. In the Holy of Holies, the deepest part of the tabernacle, where the Ark of God rested, and his presence rested, there was no natural light. Only the light of God dwelt there. And if you want to go deep and enter into the Holy of Holies, you must have the light within you, for there to be, for there is no light deep down in the abyss. You must bring the light with you. God has made species of fish that live down in those deep waters that carry their own light source. Jesus inside of you, the Word inside of you, is your light for that deep. Another problem with going deep is that it's bone chilling and freezing cold in the deep. You'll find no comfort there except that which you take with you. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. He is our guide and he will lead us on our journey through the deep. It's a lonely journey. Only the high priest was ever allowed into the Holy of Holies to alone stand before the very presence of God. When you journey into the deep, you go alone. You can't take anyone with you. You go alone. If you journey into the deep, it will be cold, it will be dark, and it will be lone. But you will be transformed from glory to glory into the very image and likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 4, 17 says, As he is, so are we in this world. He took with him all that he needed to survive. We have within us all that we need to survive, the journey into the deep, the word and the spirit. So... I urge you to go deep and be transfigured forever. I just want to talk about a little few extra tidbits that God gave me 
gave me for this, you know, after I published. But um, the journey to come ever closer and become more intimate with the Father is mirrored in the design of the tabernacle. You have the outer court where the sacrifices took place and where the labor was. The light was natural and everyone was allowed there. This is when we came to Christ and accepted the blood of Jesus as our redemption. He washed us clean and made us new by sacrificing himself for us. It was a place of death and renewal. The labor symbolizes our baptism into Christ's death, the washing away of our sins and the renewing of our spirits. Next was the inner court in which was the veil, the lampstand, and the golden altar of incense and the table of showbread. The veil reminds us that even though we have come closer to seeing the face of God, we are still keeping ourselves separated from Him. He is so holy and so pure that no flesh could survive gazing upon His face without being instantly consumed. The lampstand I see as the guide light and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13. He will shed light upon our dark places and illuminate that which we do not know. Jeremiah 17, 10. I also see Jesus here as the eternal light of God. Even though we have entered into the inner court, we can only do so because of the sacrifice of, and the cleansing. Jesus, Jesus must be carried with us into the inner court. The golden altar of incense was where prayer was made continually by a fire that was lit by the hand of God himself. Again, we see the Holy Spirit and the symbolism here. Romans 8.26 says that the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When we came before the altar of incense, it is the Holy Spirit that gave us the prayer to speak. He is ever making intercession for us. And finally, we have the, tabard the table of showbread. Jesus is the very bread of life. He is our manna and our sustenance. He said that man would live by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. In the inner court, our ears are more attuned to the voice of God. We are being guided by the Spirit, and He's praying for us when we do not know what to pray ourselves. The communion is deeper than it is within, within the outer court, and we have shed the natural for something more. Lastly, we pass through the veil of our own flesh and come into the Holy of Holies. This is the place where the very Shekinah, or manifest presence of God, rests. We have come, overcome all our fears and trepidations and finally looked into the face of God and allowed Him to burn away the last remnants of ourselves and replace it with Himself. The only thing present in here was the Ark. Inside were the tables of stone with the Ten Commandments written on them to remind us that we were once under the bondage of the law of sin and death. The pot of manna to remind us of God's that we have the true authority. We have now manifested as sons of God. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, again, this was a reading of going deep from my new book, Made for War, 52 Weeks of Wisdom and Revelation. It's on sale now at Amazon.com, and it's also available at my website, www.brianack.com. Thank you again, and God bless.